Hi, I'm Mac McCarthy, and I help people with their breakups. And today we have a really interesting topic. Been off the airwaves for a couple days, took a little rest. How and what can be done to revisit or re-spark a relationship with an ex after a mutual breakup? This was actually sent in to me as a question from the website, and it's very specific. And so I thought this is something different because there's not a lot of people that have mutual breakups. And so that that becomes a bit questionable, right? But it's possible. There's possible possibilities of mutual breakups. I don't come across them very often because if you mutually broke up, you should be at peace, right? In some sense of the word, if you honestly broke up mutually. Um, if you haven't been to one of the live streams before and you're watching this after the fact, please answer the question in the comments down below what you think about this. Is it possible for someone to actually have a mutual breakup? And what would you suggest to the individual to re-spark um, a relationship out of a mutual breakup? I'm going to go into this a little bit in depth here. If you like this video, throw me a like. If you don't like it, that's just fine. But if you have some comments for this, this is actually an individual's question. And um, I don't know if I've been in a situation where it's a mutual breakup. There's always someone that seems to want it more correct me if I'm wrong. And so that that part of the question surprises me a little bit. Are you being honest with yourself, especially if you want to revisit? So if you've been on my show before or you follow my work, the first thing I would tell you to do specifically would be to write out your whole story because I can't give you tailored advice, good advice, if I don't know what happened in the breakup and where you're coming from. If you get this question is extremely general um, and I can tackle it from that standpoint but to give you advice based on your situation you have to tell me your story you have to write that out in full give me some details about who you are and what went down and so um that would be your first step before you even think about revisiting or re-sparking a relationship you got to take a step back catch your breath and ask yourself wait a minute you know i lost a couple races i lost um my ex, I've lost this. What I mean by lost a couple races, let's let's say that I'm comparing it to this. This is off the top of my head, but the, you know, if you were a sprinter or an Olympic star and you lost a couple races, right? You have to step back and not just get back in the race again and not go, let me race the guy again. Well, you're out of juice, you're out of energy, you're beat up a little bit. You gotta you gotta get back to okay, why did I lose the race? Okay, why did we break up? Okay. And you know, if the sprinter goes, you know what, do I still have it in me to win the race? Do I, do I have the talent available? Do I have the ability or am I just, you know, going up an uphill battle in the breakup? You go, all right, was this a toxic relationship? Did we break up for a good reason? Um, why, why do I want to get back together? Why do I really want to get back together? And I'm saying, thinking about racing is because I'm like, catch your breath right? You see all these YouTube videos now that to come back to your breath and meditation. And really, if you are just out of a breakup, the, the knee jerk reaction is I'm lonely. I miss her. I miss him. I want to get back together. I want to end that. But the reality is you broke up for a reason, whether it was mutual, whether you were dumped or whether they dumped you. I don't like using that word because it's harsh, but it's reality. And <clears throat> Taking the step back to write out your story, maybe get my opinion or someone else's opinion is paramount. It's huge. It's a big part of the puzzle. Okay. So I'll talk about it a little bit, unpack this a little bit further. I wrote out some things. How or what can be done to revisit or re-spark? First of all, you're not sure about even if it's revisit or re-spark because revisit and re-spark are two different things. Revisit and re-spark. Revisit is saying that you are going to get back in the relationship. So that tells me that your expectation already is to become boyfriend and girlfriend or husband and wife again. And if you broke up, I don't think that's where your head should be. Your head should be, is this a relationship worth revisiting? Um, actually, we probably are going to have to reconnect and date a little bit before we even get back to revisiting a relationship and to re-spark it, um, what are you sparking? 
why does it need a spark? Okay, so what would what can be done to revisit or re-spark a relationship with an ex after a mutual breakup? So I have some questions for this individual to ask themselves. Number one, what happened? Can it be fixed? Something happened in your relationship. Something was an issue. Something wasn't right. Whether it was her or you, them or they, I, I, I don't know. But there's a problem or there's problems with an S. Can they be fixed? Have they been fixed? Are they fixable? And are you just saying, oh, yeah, we can fix them down the road? No, that's not my question. Do you, Have they been fixed with ED, past tense? Num number two question, and this isn't my top 10 yet, but who really wanted the breakup more? You're telling me it's a mutual breakup. You're telling me it's a mutual breakup. Right. The reality is someone in that mutual breakup wanted the breakup more. Correct me if I'm wrong. Put it in the comments below. Put it in the live stream below. But are you buying the fact that it's 100% mutual? And this isn't to make you feel bad, but who wanted the breakup more? Let's be honest, right? You might have agreed at the last moment to break up, but there's someone that wanted it more. And if it was the other person, why did they want it more? Were you appeasing them? Number three, was it really mutual if you want her back? This is a piggyback question. Was it really mutual if you want her back? I would write these questions and pause the video and, and answer them for yourself. For what's changed since the breakup that will make things different now? Big question. So, for example, a lot of people have long-distance relationships, LDRs. And they think, well, I just we're going to get back together. And we broke up. It was because we live far apart, and that's been a big issue. But we can work on that. No. Uh, is is that one of the big pro well it, it is a big problem but you know i try and i meet her once a month and um you know i could save up some money and maybe meet her twice a month but are you going to move to the same city are you going to move from los angeles to new york because it's a six hour plane ride are you going to move not well not now in the next well you're not fixing the problem Things aren't going to be different. You're still going to be apart. And maybe you see each other for two weeks and it's rose petals and wine glasses and it's uh, a hot tub at the Shangri-La. I don't know, right? But that doesn't fix the problem that you guys live a five-hour plane ride away and you're spending time texting each other more than talking. That doesn't, that doesn't fix that. And someone doesn't want to do that long term. Now, next, next question. Again, write this down. What problems contributed to the breakup? Be honest. If it's a mutual breakup, what problems existed? So these are just things that come up when I do breakup coaching that are simple, stupid, in the sense, when I mean simple, stupid, they're very simple problems that contribute to the breakup. And people make them out to be more than they are because they have everyone, including myself, has to put a story or a narrative to a problem. So that's when the emotion gets tied to it, and then that's when you twist it and shape it into whatever you like. But for example, someone lost a job. What happens when people lose a job, folks? What happens when a, when a person loses a job? They lose a part of their identity. They lose confidence. They lose significance. And it affects their relationships. So if someone lost a job and were able to get a job of equal or better value, that would fix a problem from the breakup. Your confidence would be up. You'll be a ability to make money. That would be something, you know what, that's changed. It's changed directly and it's changed right away. Now, this one's a little different. If someone's a drug addict or an alcoholic or they're taking a lot of pills and they go, I quit drinking or oh, I quit the drugs. Well, you know, we've been broken up a month, we've been broken up six weeks, and you just told me that, but over the last six months or a year, you, I, I can't believe that you just quit. You'd have to do that over six months or a year for me to believe that. And I don't know, there's been too much wreckage, there's been too much that has gone on. I'm not sure I can come back from that. But it's a good start because you need to quit eventually or else you're not going to meet someone else. You feel overweight. Someone's not happy with their body. This happens a lot, right? You say... I lost 50 pounds in six weeks or two months. I fixed the problem. Well, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that you lost that weight in a good way, you know, but you definitely identified what an issue was for you and you fixed it. Regardless of your ex takes you back, you you addressed an issue. You play video games too much. This actually comes up a lot. 
and you call back your ex and you go, I'm, I'm quitting video games, but you've been playing video games two years, three years. Is that person going to believe you? No, because you've already showed them who you were for two, three years. And so a lot of times people, I know the problem. I fixed it. I fixed it. It's like, well, a lot of times it's too late. This is a big one. You don't show enough affection. You don't show enough good communication. Someone calls back. They show uber affection. They want to give you a hug and a kiss and send you roses and tell you how much they love you. And it's like, well, now it's too much too late. So looking at the problems that contribute to the breakup, and even if you fixed them right away, I think the lost job one is maybe one of the easier ones to fix and be believable. But the other ones, they're, they're not so easy. It's, it's, someone's not just going to go, oh, yeah, you changed just because you have a new result. You have to do it over time, right? A lot of these are bad habits. And the final question that you want to ask yourself how are you better now? So if you've been broken up one month, two months, three months, four months, how are you better now? I want my ex back. I want to get back with him. I, I want to get back with her. I want to get back with him. I want to get back with her. Uh, how are you better now from two months ago? Oh, well, uh, I don't smoke cigarettes anymore. Okay. Anything else? Are you Were you having issues with being needy and clingy or were you being dishonest with them and now you're suddenly honest again? Um, these things take a little bit of time to get going. So, because the question was how to respark things, my answer is two part in that before you revisit or respark things, respark a relationship with an ex, regardless if it's a mutual breakup or not, which makes a difference. I'd have to know the story, but you do want to ask yourself that set of questions I just went through. And maybe at the end of this video, I'll go over them. Top 10 ways to re-spark things. I've talked about these before. They may be repetitive for people on the live stream, but they're very similar themes. And this is to re-spark things in a relationship or revisit a relationship, uh, regardless if it's mutual breakup or not. Number one, stop trying. Stop trying. Um, and trying too much and overcompensating too much can be pitiful. Number two, be okay with the breakup. If it was mutual... You really should be okay because if it was mutual, you were okay with it and now you're not. That shows indecisiveness and that can be unattractive to women because this individual is a man. Number three, prove that you can fly solo just fine and don't need to be reassured. That's very strong. It's confident. You might be flying crooked. You might be flying with tears coming down your eyes, but you're flying solo and you don't need to be reassured by your ex that it's okay. Number four, Improve your life honestly. What does that mean? It means don't post pictures of you having such a wonderful, super happy life. Super happy is the word I hear sometimes. It's like, are you happy? That's enough. Okay. Don't try to tell everyone how great everything is and how much you're improving when really deep down you're hurting. Be honest with yourself. Improve your life honestly. Do the small things, make baby steps, create new good habits. Number five, don't call or beg. Whether it was a mutual breakup or not, don't call or beg or be manipulative or create some kind of false story to get them in, engaged in a conversation with you again. Number six, reset your, your goals as an individual. Uh, see where you're at in life, see where you want to go in the next few years and get excited about some goals. Be like, I've always wanted to do this. I've always wanted to go to Peru. I've always wanted to um, travel to Portugal. I don't know. Reset your goals. Uh, I've always wanted to spend the summer with my grandmother because that's what I used to do as a kid. And I'd like, she doesn't have very many years left, right? Number seven, call her up for dinner to reestablish a connection. So this might shock some people. This particular situation, because I don't know his story, if it was a mutual breakup, you're on good terms, you haven't been talking for a while, or you are talking, uh, and you feel like you don't have a lot of expectations, you don't feel like you're awkward about it, well, call her up for dinner and go, hey, let's get dinner and just have a, you know, a good chat and see where things are at, and go into that dinner to reestablish a connection, not to get your girlfriend back, not to restart a long-term relationship, just to have dinner and a good conversation. Number eight, what's your expectations? Lower them or have none. 
So if you if you oh I'm gonna revisit this thing, I'm gonna respark it, I'm gonna get her back. I'm gonna whisk her off her feet and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna uh make her my wife and this and that. Lower your expectations a little bit. You broke up, you're at ground zero and you're trying to go to a hundred. You're going from the, the ground floor to the top floor and you're trying you're trying not to use the elevator, right? It's gonna probably take the stairs, dude. So Instead of being in that position, go, I just got to reestablish a connection that we like each other again and we can hang out and have civil conversation and forgive and forget some of those things in the past or not forget, but at least forgive each other. So your expectations need to come down from getting them back to possibly meeting up with them and having a good connection to if it doesn't work out, I'm okay. It's going to hurt, but I'm going to be okay. Number nine. Post pictures of you having a really good time with someone else. Now, this is manipulative. Um, if it's true, if it's true and you don't, you're not trying to hurt your ex, you can do it. You will get their attention. <clears throat> you will re-spark their interest. It's not something I like to do <clears throat> because eventually, if you do get your ex back this way, later on down the road, they don't trust you. And they want to ask questions about that situation. But does it work? Sure. With certain people that have a big ego. Uh, I don't think it's honest and I don't think it's the best way to go. But does it work? Yeah. And and we live in a social media society where someone goes, oh, that's my girlfriend. What? Who? It, it, that's mine. Right? They're having such a good time. I want that back. I don't suggest that, but that's a way to do it. And a lot of other people suggest the same thing. And if you want to visit that and you post some pictures of you really having a good time, well, then that's Semi-honest if it's true. Number 10, are you ready? Dun, 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 dun. Get out your papers and pen or get your pens and paper out. Are you ready for this one? Because this is the number one point. The number one point. Number 10, are you ready? Dun, 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 dun. I wish I had the NFL soundtrack. That's the best one. Prepare to be at your best if a chance encounter or call occurs. Now, as I said before, stop trying to get your ex back. Prepare to be at your best. What does that mean? Well, have your hair cut. Be dressed nice. Have your job in line. Be eating healthy. You don't want to be hung over if you run into them on the elevator somewhere or at work. If they call you by chance, you don't want to be stoned out of your mind. You want to be at your best. And what if they don't call? And what if they don't have a chance encounter with you? Well, you're at your best to meet someone else and just feel good about yourself. So sounds like, oh, yeah, I'll be at your best, huh? Think about the logic in that. All right, so I'm going to get to... Wow, we got some comments here. You love Mex. Hello and welcome. It's been a while. I will be reviewing your story on the channel today. I do have time to do that. Mr. Slamming123, I don't think it's possible, especially if the other party is doing better after the breakup. For my situation, my ex is traveling, got a good job. She seems happier than ever. And that's where your individual situation and everyone's individual situation is different. And that's why I'm telling you, you got to assess it as an individual and not just have some canned idea of do this this and this and this will work so that's a good response mr slamming you're being realistic she doesn't want to talk to me and is happy without me in her life why should i reach out even though i want it i want to deep down inside why well, I, I don't think it's the time or the place um if she's doing really good and she's so happy um well i mean you're gonna have to take that for what it's worth and you infiltrating that happiness. I don't, I don't know if that's going to serve you well, because if she just serves you a plate of, I'm so happy, that's going to be pretty tough to get over now that you're broken up. So I'd stay away from that. You don't do anything. Just work on yourself. Monica says we can certainly show that. I don't know why that wouldn't be shown. Um, stop trying. Yep. Yeah. Reset your goals as individual. That one had really helped me move on after me and my ex broke up after I was done feeling sorry for myself. Well, good. That's a big deal. I mean, I've always, I've, I've had times where I feel sorry for myself in my life. I'm not, 
when I give this advice, folks, I'm a human too. So it's not like I'm, you know, some superhero of breakup coaching. I, I, I tell you this from being 38 years old and having a little bit of life experience um, and thinking like, oh, what's the quick fix? There isn't really a quick fix, but stepping back, taking a deep breath, asking yourself good questions that I just mentioned, and then going through those top 10 things and like you love mechs just picked out two. That's fine. I'm not telling you to do all those things. If something bothers you, like, like that's stupid. Well, then let, tell me. Uh, Jen, I am amazing. Well, that's outstanding, Rob. I'm happy for you. That's awesome. Where are you tonight? How many live streams are you on tonight? Okay, so here's the... Haven't seen many good ones yet. Was an on entrepreneur and car stream earlier. Interesting. Like the new hair, no need for the helmet. Well, thanks, Monica. Yeah, I got a fresh one. I had to wait in line for about five people. Interesting thing in Thailand, haircuts are very cheap, actually. It's like three bucks to get a nice barber cut. But you have to, they don't do appointments. You just wait. And um, if you're a foreigner, uh, it's like uh, if there's a Thai kid that came in after you, they're like, oh, let the, let the Thai go first. It's something you have to get used to. The number one point of all time. The number one point of all time is what? I think it's probably prepare to be at your best, but when you're at your lowest, that's really hard to think about. Um, it's funny. I just did a live coaching with an individual that um, was saying that one of his big issues is not feeling physically attractive. And that for him to admit that, and, and we came up with that, and that was holding him back quite a bit, it's big, right? Because we always think that women are really highly insecure a lot about their weight or their look. And I think that um, there's some weight to that. There's there's some realities that there's a lot of men the same thing, and it affects it affects you approaching the opposite sex or being in a relationship when you don't think you're good looking at all, um, or you don't have any positive traits. So, you know, after a live coaching session, I'll send someone bullet point notes like number one, number two, number three. Monica knows this, and um, I don't know if someone else slamming might slamming's also. I don't know if it's sl slamming's. I've I've done a live coaching with. I just don't know if that's his name or not. Um, anyhow, this guy had physical attraction, and so I said, you know, start with little things like getting a cologne. Um, I've always liked Obsession by Calvin Klein. It's a basic scent, but getting a cologne. Um, getting your nails cut, going to a salon to get a haircut so you're around more women and you can get their opinion. Buy yourself some nice couple tailored shirts. Now, someone might be like, oh, that's kind of materialistic. He's already going to the gym. He's already uh, working out every day and watching what he eats. But in the meantime, just these little things that help out with physical attraction, if that's something that's bothering you, uh, they add up, right? You know, they add up doing little things that you don't think about getting an eyebrow trim or something, I guess, is something a guy wouldn't normally do. Um, but if you went to a salon, they might they might add that in. And I'm not telling you to become beta or anything like that, but just, all right, if I'm going to become more physically attractive, the obvious thing would be like get a six pack, um, you know, get yoked, get really big. But reality is like you can do some small things, some small fashion things, make sure your, your clothes fit, different things like that. And so I mentioned that to him. I'm, I said, I haven't done that for someone before. And I thought to myself, I said, I hope you didn't take that. Like, and he goes, no, you're absolutely correct. Small steps, the little things, uh, they, they add up. He goes, it was good advice. He goes, I actually booked a, an appointment at a salon to get my hair cut. <clears throat> Really post pics with someone else. Wouldn't that make them say, okay, done? Judy Jack, it's not my favorite one. Uh, it's not something I would do. I threw it in there because it works with shallow or egotistical people. It works to re-spark things or have people rethink about you. The secret is when you post those pictures, they should be absolutely true. And they shouldn't have the objective of hurting or getting your ex's attention. That's the difference. Okay. And is that a tactic I use? No. But if by chance I go out with friends, I'm not a big Facebook or Instagram person at all. And they take a picture of us out or on a rafting trip and they post it 
and by some channel of communication, my ex sees it, that can respark things indirectly, in, in unintentionally, not unintentionally, unintentionally. And that's all due to me living my life as an individual, going out, having good time and being social. Seth dropped gloves. I quit drinking completely and I felt great. Well, that's fucking outstanding, Seth. Thanks for sharing that, but I support that. I've got a lot of alcoholics in my family or off and on ones. And so um, I've dealt with that in my own life, uh, not as an alcoholic myself, uh, but I respect uh, the fact that, you know, alcohol can become a problem. I stick, I stick to sparkling waters now when I want something with a little texture. I love soda. I call it soda water. Alcohol makes anxiety and breakups worse, in my opinion. Absolutely true, Seth. Absolutely true. And I'll tell you what, as you get older, the hangovers aren't as nice. They're, they're, they're a little rougher. So old wounds that you think are fixed with an ex sometimes come back. This week, they reared their ugly head after years in hiding. Well... Maybe you want to do another coaching, Monica. Uh, sometimes you got to unpack those things, right? Had one of those this week as well. I, you know, I've told people before, I've, I've got ex-girlfriends that come up on my mind from time to time, but I don't ruminate on it or worry about it. It's one of those things where I'm like, oh, at the end of it, we had a good time or we were good together. So um, if it's a wound, though, well, how are you having trouble reframing it into a story or narrative that helps you? Because... If it's if you're still feeling wounded, there's some kind of story you have to what happened to you that isn't serving you to move forward and is making you out to possibly be a victim or possibly making you to feel bad. And is there some way you can come to the realization that that happened for a reason, you learned a lot from it, and actually when it did happen, that was the end of the relationship for you and, and that was a good thing. Monica, where they where they're hidden but needed a trigger to set them off. That's a good point, Jersey. Knowing the trigger is good, but also knowing, am I am I unfairly characterizing the story in a way that really hurts me more than I need to? I've done a really good job this last year. I had some demons of when I was a kid. Would I say demons? I don't know. Bad stories or stuff that was disempowering beliefs of my past the last couple of years. And then you go back and you rewire some of those stories and you go, actually... That person didn't mean to do that to me. That's just who they were, and that's how they were raised, and that's from their life experience, and they're no longer around, and so I'm okay with that. For the same goals I did before I met my ex, I'm just more focused on growing mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Well, you got them all then. She's a queen. It sounds like you're on board to be a queen. Queen B, they, they were triggered, Jersey girl. Okay. Identify the triggers. I don't think trying to make an ex jealous would work in your favor. It actually works with certain individuals. Again, I'm not suggesting it. I like that I got you guys' attention with the one um, baiting line of the top 10. You guys are listening. Um, it works. Not with everyone. But it works with egotistical exes, which there's a lot out there. Ones that are really big on social media and who they are. Uh, on social media. So that does work. It will get their attention. Does it mean that you'll get back together in a prolonged place? Does it mean you'll fix your problems? No. Will it get your get their attention? Possibly re-spark interest? Yes. Am I suggesting it? No, not necessarily. But I'm telling you that's something that does work. That's the worst because you never know what's going to trigger then to be prepared to deal with them. Jersey Girl, a lot of the anger came through and feelings of sadness. Yo, 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 Skinner. Always on deck. Chicago's finest. Shy town I hear you on that, Monica. Well, I like you guys supporting each other here. That's good. Seth, drop gloves. Manipulative jealousy that is fake or manufactured will never, ever work. But genuinely living your life will raise someone's curiosity. I agree. And I'm, I'm happy and I'm glad that you listened to the top 10, all of you, that commented on the one about posting pictures and didn't agree with it. I got your attention. Good. Crazy how things get re-triggered even years later. It's so true. It's so true. They can get triggered, but you can't. How should I say this? What do they call that when, when uh, like in Mission Impossible and there's a bomb and they have to. Um, they used to have it on that show 24 also, but in Mission Impossible, they have to. 
debomb it. What do they do to make the bomb stop? It's like five, four, three, two, one, and then they click the red wire and it's done. What is that called? Someone put it in the comments. Uh, no, no one's done it yet. So anyways, you get triggered, right? Think about it this way. You get triggered on something. And I'll, I've shared this before. Uh, I don't know when, but I'll share it again. I was, um, I was, I was back in my hometown. Uh, my grandfather passed away. This was three or four years ago. And he, he lived a good life and it, it wasn't as traumatic as you might think. It was hard. I love my grandfather, but he's 85, 86. He was ready to go. And, um, I was back in town. I was back in my hometown where I used to go for a jog all the time out of my breakup. And it was a place where I would, you know, I was sorting through my problems and my issues. And I was in a down state on those jogs sometimes. And so I went back to this place. I hadn't been there in like, psh, fuck, eight or nine years. I don't know what it was. And I went back to this levee on the bay in the Bay Area. And all of a sudden that triggered the feeling of being in the breakup again, being, being lost feeling wise. And I'm like, holy shit, how does that work? Environment. I was able to immediately be like, wow, I'm in such a better place. I feel so much better. I never thought I'd feel this way again. But that's why I tell people it's really good to move, um, especially if you say, shared a place with your ex. It's it's very good to be able to move. If you shared in a, a small apartment and you didn't change the furniture or nothing, it gets, it gets awkward because your mind and your brain associates certain items, things, and places with feelings. And so in that moment, that was, I was like, I haven't been here for eight years. I, I all of a sudden just felt like I was back in that moment for a split second. And I was able to debunk that feeling by going, I'm in such a better place right now. That's a crazy feeling and let it go um, and, and go, wow, how much I've grown since then. When is it time to reach out to your ex to see if she's interested to have dinner? It's been almost two months. Your top 10 says to reach out for a chat. I would hate to hear the rejection or worse. Okay, so good question, Mr. Slammy. I only put that in there based on if your story, the way I explain that, he says they mutually broke up. If they mutually broke up, you're on good terms. You're not awkward. You're in a really good place. You both don't have ill feelings. Um, someone hasn't conveyed that they're so much happier without you. Um Someone hasn't conveyed that they're not happy with you or they don't want to revisit things. They, You basically broke up for a few different reasons. Like if it was a mutual breakup, because that was the basic of the topic. If it was a mutual breakup, you broke up because, you know what, this um, we're just not having fun anymore. It's getting monotonous. Couples have this happen. Now that kind of a breakup where you still have some trust, you still have some attraction, but you just don't have fun anymore. Like two months down the road or a month down the road, you could say, hey, let's go out and get dinner because the wreckage, the problems of that breakup, those those aren't as significant as someone, you know, um, breaking up and getting really hurt. So what I would say in your particular case, Mr. Slammy, because I know your case, I'd stay in no contact for you. But you're right, I did say that. But what I was saying that towards is if the if the mutual breakup was one where you don't have any expectations. But if you already have the expectation that I would hate to hear the rejection or worse, well, then you're already going in it with an expectation of that being a possibility and you being hurt, then don't do it. Oh, don't. I don't know, Monica, a little too well. Haven't been drunk in years. Lots of interest in that sort of activity. What do you mean? I don't know. That's a uh, lost interest. I meant. Oh, lot. Okay, that clarifies it. Well, Rob, what are you in your thirties now? I mean, I think you get to a certain age too. It, it's it's just not as fun as it used to be. It's not as fun the next morning. Uh, Disney Orlando. I don't know what that's about. I've never been drunk. Wow. Well, good for you. I think that's a positive. Um. I'm going on a Disney trip with a platonic on my side anyway guy friend. I'm actually afraid to post pics together because I don't want to give the wrong idea even as friends. All right, Judy Jack, does this guy know you're just friends? I mean, why are you why are you guys just friends? And I don't think it would be fair. It, let me put it this way. If this guy's a type that's willing to just be friends on the trip, I would say you holding back from posting pics is 
um, if, if, if you're friends with them and you care about them, then if someone says, Oh, I, I, I know you guys are together or something's going on. You can just say, no, nah, we're just really good friends, but I wouldn't hold back for that reason. That's letting other people's feelings or assumptions dictate what you want to do. And it could be hurtful because if that guy goes, Hey, let's take a picture. And you're like, Oh no, no, no. He's going to, he's going to think like, what's wrong. And are you being honest with yourself? Does this guy have a hidden agenda or does he want more? I'm not saying he does. I'm just asking the question, Judy Jack. I was just told that my ex is in Florida right now for work awaiting this hurricane and my anxiety is up worrying about him because I still care. Well, just if you could, um, I don't know if you're religious or not, say a prayer for him, do something nice for him in silence, light a candle and be okay with still caring. But that doesn't mean you need to be in direct contact if it's toxic for you. Hey, Mac, well, I had a good conversation on Messenger with my ex. But then she was really cold again the following day, so I'll leave her be. She seems very guarded, but I'm not worried. I know I've made changes in time. She'll realize it. Well, don't make changes so that she'll realize it. Make changes so lone Capricorn can be alone and be okay with that. Yes, cross-country Orlando. I've never been to Disney, Disney World. Just post them saying he's a friend. Diffuse. I don't know what diffuse defuse oh my god the words on the tip of my tongue what's it to are you thinking about the words on the tip of your tongue to to de-bomb a bomb what do you call that when you do that with a bomb i think that's what you're thinking about yes moving is good is a good to jump start for me fun shaw i've never seen you on or fun shui fun sawa what an interesting name <laughs> Um. Moving is, I mean, and I used to say you should move cities or move states, and obviously I've done it before. Uh, but if you're in the same apartment, there was a guy that was in the same apartment recently. Like, if you can move to a different part of town and move somewhere you're excited about, move for location, especially if you live alone or you're single, you want to live for location. You don't need school districts. You want close to downtown. You want close to the river. You want close to the mountains. You want a place where that you're excited to live in because environment absolutely counts towards your happiness you want a place where the weather's suiting you if you like snowboarding live by the snow and think about this if you're like oh i can't move there why not make a list so true i so true i got rid of everything that belonged to my ex or was given to me by him i've i've talked about this in videos before i did that when i broke up i just did it intuitively i was a little bit of an asshole years back because i was upset but at the same time i didn't want to have another altercation or be emotional or be needy. And so I just left it in a shoebox on the porch with pictures framed and shit like that. Some people might be this little dramatic guys just like pick your shit up. I probably wouldn't say it that way now. Um, but I certainly wouldn't feel obligated to meet in person to give pictures up and be dramatic all over again. Once, once you've broken up and you kind of said what you had to say, I mean, do you want to revisit the breakup again and again? Rewounding happened with my ex-husband this week. Um, it's easier, in my opinion, to break things off with an ex you just date. You can put it behind you. Seeing your ex due to having a child together. I could understand that then, Monica. Yeah, being married and having a child is a different ball game. I can, I can see that. And I haven't been married and I don't have a child, so I can't relate directly. But I've seen it with friends and family members, and it's different. It's a different dynamic. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you and you can't just walk away from that. You're you're correct. What's up, Mary? Mary, Mary. Yes, I did get a haircut. He probably does have a hidden agenda, but Mac, that's not my problem. Oh my God. Oh, Judy Jack. <laughs> So, I mean, with the guys that are on here, we have a nice little group on here, 16, 17 people. Is Judy Jack being – all right, let me ask you this. If you think – this is interesting. He probably does have a hidden agenda, meaning you know he has feelings or likes you and he's being a bit beta or uh, unclear about that. So do you, are you just not interested at all? Or if he made the right moves at the right time, you could be open to it. Secondly – is it right of you to lead him on if he does have those? 
I mean, saying that that's not your problem, that's an interesting thing to unpack. It's funny. I was just talking to my niece who's 24 years old, and she was telling me that she goes to this bar in this college town near she, where she lives, and she was saying that, um, oh, all of me and my friends, and she's got um, – a friend that's gay, that's a guy, and two other, um, I think she said two other girlfriends went with her. And um, she said that, oh, the guy just, the guy that's the owner just loves us. He loves us. He just always buys us free drinks. And I said, I just was only almost going to say my niece's name, but I won't share her name on here. Um, I said, well, which one of you does he like? And she's like, what? And I'm like, well, which one of you does he like? Because he's not just buying you guys all drinks because he likes all of you. And she goes, <laughs> she goes, he likes me. He likes me. I'll, I'll tell this. And I'm like, why didn't you just say that in the beginning? And she's like, how do you know this stuff kind of a thing? You know what I'm like? I, I just know that the guy wasn't going to buy four people drinks and including, I don't have a problem that the guy's gay. I've met the guy before. He's cool. He's fun. Uh, but buying the guy that's gay a drink too, right? And she even said he came up to the group and he goes, what are you, gay or something? To the guy. Um, and the guy responded, well, you want to go back in the the bathroom with me? As a joke, right? And my niece was saying like, what a jerk huh? to say that. I'm like, well, he was just trying to establish probably if he was with one of you guys because he wasn't buying drinks for everyone. He was buying drinks to impress you. And you knew that. And she's like, yeah, I know started laughing women are devious detonate thank you detonate a bomb so <laughs> i you know i'm I, i'm sitting here like having the picture of mission impossible or uh that show 24 where they're like red wire or green wire it's so funny because all these bomb uh these bombs that are going to detonate they all have the same thing it's like green wire or red wire Red wire, oh, the bomb never goes off, right? But what I was saying is when you have a trigger, right, is it'd be nice that you have some red wire or green wire that you can clip and go, yeah, just stop it before the bomb goes off, right? Thanks for that, you love Mex. I love Mexican food, by the way. That was the word that was on the top of my tongue. Did you get a haircut? Yes, I did. I'm about to go to Raleigh for work. Another Carolinan? Is that where you're from? North Carolina too? I'll be there for two weeks hoping it will help get my mind off my ex, but I've never been there before, so I don't know what it's like. Raleigh, Raleigh or Raleigh? My One of my good friends' last name is that. Um, is that North Carolina or South Carolina? Because we got a lot of Carolinans here. Mr. Mr. Slamming's Carolina. Thanks, Coach. I'll stay in contact and positive. I'm feeling better these days. I would stay in no contact for you, bud, because I know your situation. We had a live coaching if it's the person I'm thinking of. I had one potential, but she ended up not being interested in me. Oh, well, plenty of other fit. That's exactly how it is, bud. Oh, well, it's fine. You're going to be okay just because one didn't work out. And uh, Mr. Slamming, I am – I am going to do something uh, on the next live stream, maybe later. I might do two today. I might do two live streams, but I'll do one um, today or tomorrow. And you were asking about pickup lines or approaching women. Um, I just revisited a couple different books that I have notes on. And it was funny, this book, Atomic Attraction. Um, I can't think of who wrote it, but it was Masculine Energy or Kyle, I prefer to call him because that's his name. He had it recommended on his website and I, that's a book I hadn't looked at. And the first few chapters, I was just like, oh God, because reading a lot of different books, sometimes stuff gets repetitive. It's like he talked a whole chapter about working out in the gym, a whole chapter about eating healthy. Um, but there were some different things that he mentioned that maybe, um, the biggest one I would mention if you're starting a date again, Mr. Slamming, and congratulations on having the confidence to even do so because you're coming out of a pretty rough breakup that affected you and, and you're, you're, you're putting in an effort to meet women. If you, if you swing and miss, it's better than getting caught looking at the plate, right? You know what I mean? I don't know if you're into baseball, but right, if you get struck out looking, 
you'd much rather take some hacks and swing, get a couple foul tips. Pick your shit up. Should have said that. I did say that. <laughs> I didn't. I think I said your shit will be on the porch. Just pick it up when you can. It'll be there the next couple of days. I didn't want to see her. How did I test you talk with a friend where I listed all the BS he tried with me? A friend making plan, making plan, then not following through, acting busy, too busy for me. But he got mad and tried to flip it. I told him walk away. Agree to disagree is very powerful. Uh, no, not right to lead anyone on. Judy Jack, I still got a lot of love for you and a lot of appreciation. I just was unpacking that a little bit when you said that, but I'm still here for you. You're still on. The, you're still a big part of this live stream, and uh, I hope you don't think that I was going after you on that one because uh, sharing stuff. Being honest is a big deal. Hey, Coach, just saying thanks for the insight on one of my emails. You said YouTube almost a year ago. Callie Roberts, I actually remember the name, but I don't remember the story. Still watch some of your vids from time to time. Always learning, always growing. Well, thanks, Callie, for checking in and saying thank you. Thank you for saying thank you. I hope my video response helped you in some way because uh, I was just telling someone this earlier. I've been focusing on helping individuals rather than just uh, the masses. <laughs> Too busy is bullshit, Monica says. Too busy is bullshit. Yeah, people that I've found that when once you start taking responsibility and accountability and you're someone that used to be late a lot or make excuses a lot, and myself included in my 20s, I was one of those people. I don't know a lot, but I had my share. And you'll, you'll have these excuses float up and these bullshit things. And then all of a sudden you'll be like, just tell the fucking truth. All right. I just had someone I had to talk to last week and it was a 9.30 p.m. Um, time. And I was, I was just tired. I had done two live streams. I had talked to two people in live coachings. I had done some teaching. I was just tired. And I, I thought about saying, you know, I, I had a headache. I thought about saying this or that. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to tell the fucking, I'm just going to tell the truth. I don't have any juice right now. I, I, it's too late. I'm going to have to reschedule it. And the person was like, it's okay. No problem, man. You know what I mean? And it felt, it's something I've, I've done for a while now, but it still pops up in your head to go, well, they're going to be upset. And so I need to make an excuse. Uh, why not lead with honesty? I, I, I told him. I don't have the juice right now, man. I'm sorry. We're going to have to reschedule. And I rescheduled it and immediately. It was fine. It's been a week now. Uh, I'm trying to stay busy, though, trying to stay the course. We'll stop trying and just do it. How long? How long should the no contacts supposed to last? At this rate, I'm not going to reach out. And she's a stubborn person, so she's not going to reach out. I guess what's we're at a stalemate. You're not a stalemate. You're in no contact primarily to take care of yourself, to embrace the fact that you're a single individual and that you can make it on your own. And if she contacts you back, it's a bonus. Now, recently, some of you guys liked the love chat. I just, by chance, listened to one of his videos. And he claims, which I don't know is true or not true. This is his professional opinion as a behavioral analyst who, who um, you know analyzes everything. Um, he claims that in his research, which interesting when someone says I have research, but they don't show the research. Um, I have data, but there, I don't, I didn't see the data anywhere, but he says in his experience, he would say eight months, he'd say, but in eight months, that's a pretty good time frame of someone popping up, uh, within the no contact. And if they don't buy eight months, it's probably curtains. He said, in saying that, he has seen cases where people show up a year or two years later. He goes, after three years, it's completely, you know, they forgot about you. I don't know if that's true or not. That's based on something he said. What I would tell you is don't focus on a time limit or how long it's supposed to last because it'll drive you nuts. And if you create some kind of finish line like eight months or six months or seven months and it doesn't work out, it just brings you down to ground zero. The, the idea is for you to keep dating, keep going out, keep getting out there, have a good time, work on yourself, do those things. She contacts you and she's interested. Be prepared 
part of being prepared is you going out, having a good, good time and taking care of yourself. Because if you're sitting there waiting, you're going to be anxious, excited, and you're going to overcompensate and you're going to ruin things when you guys, if you do have the opportunity to meet up again, because you're going to put so much into it. If you were to get the opportunity again, you want to be in a place, wow, I'm really surprised she contacted me. Maybe we should get something to eat. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I'm supposed to meet up with Mary and Monica later on this week because I got two other dates planned. That's a really good place to be in where you're spinning some other plates. Well, thanks, Mary. I appreciate it. I guess I was in need of one, right? Sometimes I sometimes I wish I had, when I lived in San Diego, well, actually, when I first lived here, I grew my hair out long and I really liked it. But I'm at a point now with the receding hairline where I probably have to go short most of the time. Um, Monica says, don't count the days. It's indefinite. If person doesn't reach out, they may, they mean zero to your life. Wow. I'm on the Bay, but your office has a location in Raleigh. I'm from the, you're from the Bay D where are you from? I'm San Mateo, bud born and bred. Actually, I was born in Redwood city. Um, I'm from the Bay. Barry is a great place. It's a bit crowded now. A bit crowded. Judy Jack, I'm still interested in someone else. I was originally going to meet with my son who can't make it. This guy offered. Two guy friends actually offered. I've known him for four years but never met. Ooh, you've known him for four years but never met him. Hmm. It, let me ask you this, Judy Jack. I'm, I, well, that's great, hon, that you're not easily offended. I just... Sometimes that's my own little insecurity being the person that uh, helps people out and goes out of my way. Sometimes I'm like, did I, did I hurt this person's feelings? Because it's a public platform, you know? And so I'm able to talk, but you're not able to defend yourself openly. So I'm cognizant of that. But thank you for saying that, Judy Jack. We're on the same page then. I told him if he tried anything in the hotel that I would leave. <laughs> Wow, that's putting up some boundaries. Why don't you leave yourself a little? If you haven't met the guy yet, why are you putting up these boundaries, Judy Jack? If you guys are going on a vacation over there together, allow yourself the opportunity to buy. Allow your, yourself the opportunity to have a good time. Allow some serendipity. Hey, Matt, quick question. I only do quick questions. How do you lower or have no expectations in general? Well, Monica mentioned the expectation hangover, which I haven't read yet, but that might be something good to look at. Um, short answer, since you said quick question, be really happy with where you're at and, and where you're at in life currently. Be thankful and grateful. And to do that, you literally, you know, a lot, a lot of people, myself included, say grace, but there was a reason people said grace at dinner, to be thankful and grateful. And I think if you have some kind of affirmation in the morning or some kind of prayer or whatever and get more reacquainted with being thankful, that'll help with expectations. Um, asking yourself what you really need to live in life, which is food, water, shelter, and a bit of love, but not necessarily love from your ex. You can get a, you can get a lot of love from petting your dog. You can get a lot of love from you know having a good conversation with your mother or your sister. And so in general, I would, you know, that's, I don't like general questions because the answer doesn't get to the specific problem. But um, as far as your ex goes, you need to get to a place where you're so happy with yourself and you're confident, not necessarily, you know, so, so confident, but you're in a place where you're like, you know, if I don't get this ex back, I'm able to meet someone else. Maybe not now, but later I'm a high value individual. I do good things. <clears throat> I'm, and I'm going to say this again, folks. I'm going to I'm going to create a movement here eventually. I'm working on this where we all do some charity work and discuss it with each other because that's a core thing that a lot of people need to start doing is some kind of charitable work because too many people are obsessed with their outcomes and what they have and how much they don't have. And I'll tell you what, when you go to an old people's home or you go to a mentally challenged home or you do anything where you help homeless people, it gets real. It gets real, real quick. And the idea of, oh, I wanted that iPhone 10, I just had to have it, gets really small. And so I'd say doing some charity work would 
in, lower your expectations about what you need in life. Uh, studying Stoicism, um, which is uh, a philosophy. I've had some people on here that have really gotten deep on Stoicism. I'll write that down. Someone doesn't know what that is. Um, that would be a big one. So let me know what you think about that answer. What was her reaction to you telling her to, to get her stuff? <laughs> she just came and got it. And that's the funny thing, Skinner. This was like 10 years ago. I was like, I wasn't interested in the reaction, to be quite honest. I don't even remember it because I already knew it wasn't going to be like, oh, I'm sorry. It was, she was going to pick it up because we were done. Um, I knew that if we were in each other's contact that I wasn't going to be able to keep my frame. Uh, and, and I haven't even like 10 years ago or when this happened or 11 years ago, probably 11 years ago when I, I keep saying 10, it was more than that, maybe 11. Um, I knew I didn't want to put myself in a situation like, Oh, why are we praying? You know, like, so I was like, fuck that. I'm going on offense. I'm not easily offended. Well, that's outstanding. I'm almost broke. No contact today. Well, almost doesn't count. And this is a good time when almost didn't count, right? I think a lot of your advice can be put into other areas of life. You could transition into life coaching instead of just love coaching. Well, uh, I think that for me, life coaching is too broad and too general. But I appreciate that as a compliment from you. Uh, on the flip side, I think, excuse me, I believe that a breakup's an opportunity and it's an opportunity to look at everything in your life and go, am I happy with everything else? Now I have some extra time and I have some extra time to look in the mirror and assess things. And so a byproduct of being in a breakup is changing your life for the better. And so I'd rather deal with people with that spark from the get go than go out looking for every Tom, Dick and Harry with every problem in the world. I, I like the idea of specificity. Specificity? Is that even a word? I like the idea of being specific with what's going on. Oh, the name Fun Sahawa is, is Fun Stay at Home Wife. Don't ask questions about the friend. <laughs> okay, I can read between the lines. Good for you. I'm not the moral police, by the way. So. Whatever you do on your time is, you know. Um, B mock 009, not to be confused with 007. Hey, Matt, going to see my ex's mom at work tomorrow. I suspect she will strike up conversation. Should I be open, honest, or just reserved and cordial? It's been a month of no contact. Thanks for everything. Um, who are you as a person? This might surprise you. This kind of, an, this is how I give advice. I don't give advice based on who I am or what I believe. If you're a reserved, cordial person, then be reserved and cordial. If you're more open and honest, then be more open and honest. Do you understand me? If I had to guess, because you said you're open, because you said open and honest first, that's your first choice. That's what I'd go with. And that's what I would do. Um, I wouldn't sit there and talk about your ex for an hour or two. Do not bring up your ex. If your your ex's mom brings it up, be short about that. Don't sit there and tell her how you've been seeing other people or she's – don't bring any of that up. Don't get into that because then it will just create narrative. Uh, thanks for the likes, people. I got a donut up there, and this helps me out a little bit with the algorithm. If you don't like the show, it's just fine, though. Uh, I hear you, Mac, but I don't want to give a, any guy the idea that he can pull the wool over my eyes. Even if I liked him, I don't sleep around. I'm older for me. That's the only, only for an exclusive relationship. Well, that's fair enough. That's fair enough, Judy Jack. I just thought it was hilarious that you said that right off the bat. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it. You're good people. Um, and you know, I mean, Judy Jack, it's just funny to me. Because so many guys do the friends uh, approach. And like I've told people before, full disclosure, I've had plenty of friends that were women that I regard as good friends. Um, most of them would usually be coworkers. 
people I'm regularly talked to or people that I frequently go to a cafe or go to a, sh a shop or something and see them. So I don't, I don't feel like that's a major issue going on a trip together where you stay in the same hotel. My thing is, is like, if you're both single, uh, I, I, I appreciate the fact that you have that boundary put up right away. If you're both single, why not, why not let, you know, let yourself have a little good time and have the door open either way. That's all I'm saying. Um, but if you're very stern about this sleeping together, you could be upfront about that. Okay. Mac, how do you feel about dating people who has the best friend of the opposite sex that isn't gay? Okay. I have to reread that again. It sounds confusing. Mac, how do you feel about dating people who has a best friend who has a best friend of the opposite sex that isn't gay? I don't understand. Can you elaborate, Skinner? I'm kind of confused on, on what the question means. I just pressed like. Thanks, Mary. I appreciate it, hon. Thanks for not being the moral police. Good people sometimes do bad things. I mean, there's certain things that are, are like physical abuse. Sometimes people mention that in, in stories and stuff. I don't, that's, that's non-negotiable in my book. Um, things like that are non-negotiable, but uh, are non, you can't go, oh, well, there was a reason for it or something like that. No, even, even highly detrimental uh verbal abuse like things that are said that are just horrible sometimes i get some stories i'm like i'm not putting this on youtube um i'm not giving it airways even if even if you're the victim of it or not it's just stuff that isn't to be shared and it's it's not right but i think i know what you're talking about um so in that case no and i've had um just for the record out there, I've, I've had plenty of people that are in a cheating relationship or talking to someone else that I've talked to. And people are like, oh, you're taking their side. No, I'm listening as a neutral objective party and understanding where they're coming from and then letting them understand the consequences of it too. So there's a difference because cheating has been going on since the beginning of time. It's a part of humanity. It's not necessarily like, you know, just something people should be stoned in the streets for. thing okay i lost my place in other words the best friend is a beta yet not gay maybe everyone sees relationships differently the problem is when people just see relationships from their viewpoint of how they were raised in their life experience and then they get really upset because someone does something and they go i would never do that well of course you would never do that because you're not the same person um So the best friend is a straight male. Mac, how do you feel about dating people who has a best friend of the opposite sex that isn't gay? Okay, okay, now I understand. Thanks, Rob, for clarifying that. I just was, the way it was worded, I wasn't, okay. So the best friend's a guy friend that's straight. Um, I've heard of this happening before. And le let me, okay. I've had good friends that I work with or I used to be um, go to school with them. And I, I, I don't use this term best friend. I wouldn't say any of the girls that I was friends with, I would call a best friend, okay? I always say I have some favorite friends. And someone like myself that's lived a lot of different places, had a few different jobs, I got a lot of friends that I just call friends. And for a year or two years, we were really close and then I moved or a year or two when we worked together and then I moved, you know, so these friends, they don't lose value. They just lose, um, the constant interaction of friendship. Right. But if this is a good question, actually, um, Skinner, and thanks for clarifying that Rob, really good question. My thing is, where there's smoke, there's fire. So if your girlfriend is good looking, appealing, I don't know, I, this high value thing gets thrown around. Anyways, she's someone that most guys are interested in. Um, and she's got a best friend, guy friend. I'm going to, I'm going to believe more than not. I'll have to meet him though. 
If I meet him, I'm pretty good at reading people. I'd have to assess him as an individual. This wouldn't just be a general thing. And I'd know right off the bat. Now, especially if he's feeding some things about me. Yeah, you know, John said that, you know, you don't seem to listen very good. That would be like, ding, ding, ding. This guy's trying to, you know, he's trying to play the friend. He doesn't have enough confidence and da, da, da. But I would say in my own experience of having women that are friends, if they get in a new relationship, when they get in a new relationship, they're hot and heavy and whatnot. I tend to back off the friendship a bit because I know the other guy's thinking this guy's going all in. I, you know, if we're both single and we're friends, we can hang out more often and we can, we can help each other out as far as meeting people and stuff. But once you got a boyfriend, uh, that boyfriend's going to immediately be threatened by our friendship. And I understand that. So I, it's not that I'm not friends with them anymore. It's just that I no longer hang out with them as much or put as much weight into the friendship. And I'm okay with that. I've had that happen before. And I even had like the guy that the girl was dating go, you know what? This is funny. He goes, I had your shorts on today. And I was like, what the fuck? We were at a bar and he's like, this was years back. And, he, and it's her new boyfriend, right? And he's like, ah, oh, your shorts on today. Your draws. And I was like, what is he saying? You know what I mean? I just met the guy. Well, the, we had all went out to a bar before. And the girl that was my friend had stayed over at my apartment. We didn't hook up. I think some other people had stayed in my apartment because I lived close to downtown. And I gave her a pair of like boxer short shorts type thing you know, like a guy shorts to sleep in. And um, I guess she took them home and she told him like, oh, those are Max's Max shorts and gave them to him to wear and because he needed a pair of shorts to sleep in. So he told me at the thing, like letting me know. And I was like, sweet, you can have them, dude. <laughs> I, I don't care. Like it didn't even phase me. I didn't even feel, I didn't feel threatened. Uh, I didn't, feel, but I didn't know what he was talking about. There were, there were, I don't think there were boxers. There were like long shorts that you could sleep in. I don't know. And um, I didn't even remember she had them. And it was just funny because what he was doing in that moment was val val validating or verifying, this is my girl now, dude. Stop having her over to your house to fucking sleep over. And I didn't take it personal. I knew that what he was saying is like, I'm serious about her. I'm like, no problem. I, did, I didn't want him back, dude. I was like, no problem. You can have him, dude. <laughs> I didn't care. My reaction was was stoic. It was just like, what? I didn't get it at first. Then I'm like, yeah, that's fine. You can have him. But going back to that, uh, you know, having a straight friend for your girlfriend's best friend, I'd have to size up the individual uh, and, and meet them. If the guy didn't shake my hand, that's a big one. Like if the guy goes straight in and just talking to the girl, I've seen this before. I've done, I've been around this before you run into some guy at the mall and it might not be your best friend or a coworker or something. And she's like, Oh, Hey, what's up, Ron? And comes over and says hello to him. And the guy doesn't even look at you, introduce himself or shake your hand. That's disrespectful. You don't have to be buddies with me, but you do need to acknowledge, Hey, how you doing? I'm Ron. I work with, I work with her. Da, 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 nice to finally meet you. If the guy just sits there and owns in on her and talks to her and talks to her and talks to her, by the way, your girlfriend should be introducing you. My girlfriends usually do. But I'm saying that if that happens, that's a fucking red flag for both of them. I just pressed like two. Thanks, Mary. Thanks for not being the more. Okay. Da, 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 da. So the best friend is a straight male. Got that. Good call, Mac. I see relationship different than most. In bed. Mary, what are you doing? Mary and Rob. <laughs> Guy friend is the friend zone if he could. He probably wouldn't just be. <laughs> Guy friend is in the friend zone, Funshaw says. If he could sleep with her, he probably would. Just being real. Uh, yeah, like I said, I have to meet them first to understand it completely, but most of the time, yes, if he's a straight guy. Um, and if the guy has any self-respect, once, once his friend is in a serious relationship, he should, uh, 
if he's inviting her to hang out, he should be inviting her to bring her boyfriend along. Does that make sense? If if I'm friends with a girl and she's got a new boyfriend and I'm having a barbecue and I'm like, oh, you know, Beth, bring over your new boyfriend. It wouldn't be like, oh, just come over. It would be acknowledging that she's got a guy. That's a friend. It's possible. People can be friends like that. When they're not single, that's when the relationship changes. Because if you're friends, there's always the option. If, if a female has a male best friend, it all comes down to do you trust the girl? Because most guys would go for it with a friend. Girls usually have more boundaries. Good point, Judy Jack. But on the flip side, the guy could be manipulative and he could affect your relationship regardless if they sleep together or not. I don't want him in my girlfriend's ear talking shit, even though it's her responsibility to filter what she filters in and out of her ears. The same time, again, I'd have to meet the guy. He wasn't wearing the underwear. If given back, I would burn them. Okay, so true. No, you don't want it shorts back. Okay, you guys like this story, huh? It's funny how I just remember these stories. Um, I just remember the guy thinking it was he was so fucking cool. And I was like, what? what? And I just went over to my friend. I'm like, what is he talking about? She's like, well, remember you gave me those shorts to sleep in? I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, fine. And I honestly, she was a friend. I wasn't highly attracted to her. She was a friend. She had a really good personality, and we just vibed. She was into basketball and sports and stuff, but I, we both weren't attracted to each other because you know how I know that is because we were attracted to each other as friends because the boyfriends that she chose and the girlfriends that I chose, they were very different than who we were. So that's how you know. Because people have a type a lot of times, right? They have a type that they like or they're attracted to. No, you don't want shorts back. Why would you ever want to rock those? I didn't take the shorts back. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's more about him than you. James Bond is ass. Like, uh, okay, so anyways, yeah, it wasn't. it wasn't even a big deal. I don't I don't mind what you write. It's just that um I don't mind what you write. It's just that I'm trying to keep up with um YouTube so they don't get upset, right? It's not my thing. Yeah, wasn't a big deal. That's a good place to be in too when you're not like, "Oh, I'm I'm like it's I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The the shorts, we didn't do anything." I was like, "Whatever you want to believe, dude." <laughs> just kept drinking my beer and doing my thing and talking to other people. And I could tell it was like yeah, and I was like, don't even worry about it. We don't I don't have an interest in her like that. Would you reach out to someone by text if you haven't heard from her in a week or so? I asked a girl out, but no reply. It's it's been since last Saturday, or should I keep on moving on? So from a woman's perspective, she says keep moving. I would say you can ask one more time, but that would be your clarity really to to stop. Um, you have nothing to lose if you ask one more time. Um, just if she says, oh, I have to think about it, just go, okay. If she goes, oh, I have to look at my schedule, just go, okay, don't go. Um, you know, say that, hey, next Friday night, make it a decisive, specific plan. And then if she says no, or she has to think about it, or she's not interested, then just go, okay, don't write anything else. Yeah, some people do have a type, like when they marry the same person four times, literally different people, but all the same. Yeah, I mean personality types are always going to be a little bit different, but a lot of times people tend to be attracted to similar things, right? Similar physical aspects. Um, I think people would agree on that. Personalities can change a little bit, but certain, certain character things, but yeah, most of the time. And that's when people are like, Oh, I'm always, I'm always interested in jerks or I'm always interested in women that are really needy. It's like, no, that's what you're filtering for. And that's what you think good relationships are about. You actually, in a, some sick way, like individuals like that. This has been a really good live stream today, folks. This has been great. It's got 12 people on deck. It's been about an hour and 15 minutes. Thanks, Judy Jack. Thanks, Mary. We've got a mix of men and women. So it's not just all that. We've got a few different ages represented here. Rob's always on deck. Skinner, Chicago's finest. 
Zach Levine will never live up to the hype. <laughs> you love Mex, New York's finest. I'll be reviewing your story today. Um, yeah. It's because I'm here. We'll get in, we'll get it popping from now on. Usually I'm asleep though. JC is a month too soon to get back with an ex. Well, I need to know your story. Send your story in and I can give you a full take. I, I mean, this is the problem with the internet is that you ask questions like that and you'll get answers, but they won't be specifically tailored to what's going on with your breakup because everything has different twists and turns. So you want to send your story in? I'll be happy to review it. <clears throat> Can't wait for the next video about approaching women. I'm kind of rusty. I'm with you, bud. When you asked that yesterday, I was I was thinking to myself, um, because you had been in a long term relationship, and so I remember being that way. You know, eleven, ten, or eleven years ago now, and being like, I got to re up on some of this shit. And I did some reading, and then like I told you, a year later, a year and a few months later, when I got a really good girlfriend, and I wouldn't even say I got. We both liked each other. It wasn't a got. It was mutual. Um, I was in a good position. And so, yeah, you got to brush up on some of that stuff. You got to sharpen the sword, sort of say. Um, so I'll, I will go over that in the next one. I want to have a few notes on it, though. A lot of the stuff, too, on YouTube and stuff is a bit redundant, right? Eye contact. Um, you know, what? If a woman's facing going out the door rather than facing you, that means she's not interested. I think realizing who's not interested is just as important as realizing who's interested. But I would say that in my experience of um, approaching or talking to good-looking women, a lot of times they will act uninterested as a test because they get approached all the time. And so you being able just to go, okay and ignore them is actually really attractive to them because they're not used to it so that's a little snippet from the future show any other question folks any other question you know jc that the short answer to that is is it a month too soon to get an x to get back with an x depending on your situation i would say that if you're feeling unsure about it then yes um if you've broken up multiple times before yes because there's some problem you're not fixing random dating random dating is different these days online and apps how soon should you just meet up besides just talking and texting on the phone dating is different these days online apps how soon should you just keep up besides just talking and texting on the phone what's game mary um Thanks, Mr. Slammy. That comes from someone that has sent me a story and actually did live coaching. I, 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 I'm not doing it just as a plug. It is a plug, right? But um, you really aren't going to get the answer that's directly towards you. Not asking for me, don't worry. My hands are full. <laughs> You're funny. Um, I think that, yeah, people do way too much texting now. But I think it's part of society, right? The part about online apps and dating apps, I've used the analogy of if you're if you're mining for gold, you're you're basically going out there with a pan and having to sift through all the other rocks and and dirt to get to a small pebble or two. And it's like um it's like cold calling. Have you guys ever done cold calling for sales or you know what cold calling is? I think it's not even around anymore, but I remember early on in my sales career for real estate and I did internships at different places. They're like, Oh, make a hundred cold calls. And I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> and that, that didn't interest me at all. Making some kind of bullshit call to someone and trying to get business, but it was effective, but you'd have to make a hundred calls to give, you'd have to give a hundred calls to get two clients. And that's what you're doing. I think with online dating, um, a lot of times you're going to have to go through, I don't want to say a hundred dates, but maybe 20 profiles and to find a match. It's, it's more plentiful, but it's not necessarily uh, less work. 
I think I think the ideal thing is to meet someone you work with, meet someone that you're familiar with, meet someone at a cooking class, meet someone at a yoga class, meet someone going to school, going to your university, taking a training program, something where you're mutually uh, learning or growing. Uh, that would be a nice place. A cafe that you go to regularly. If you go get your manicure or pedicure done with Mary, then you know someone like that where you guys get to talk a little bit before and it's not so passive. And then you say, Oh, you want to go out sometime? That's kind of cool. Um, yeah. Catch your breath, JC. Send your story in dude. Ignoring the girl acting like you don't care. Honestly. And you might think I'm joking. I wasn't acting. You know why? Because women with an attitude like that are rude to me uh, because I don't consider myself to be an asshole. Uh, I just feel like, well, that's unattractive of you. You just lost all attraction points in my book. So you might think like, oh, yeah, he's just trying to act. Nope. You got an attitude. You're full of yourself. Then for me, it's an easy, it's an easy, yeah, I'm, I won't even make eye contact with you again. It's, it's not from a bitter place or an angry place. It's from... Oh, wow. You're one of those. You got a big attitude and a big ego. You think you're better than everyone. You can't have a conversation. That's just fine. I'll talk to someone else that has good a personality. Usually getting back together real quick, like a month, mostly works if you broke up for a very impulsive reason. Good point, Judy Jack. Good point. Yes, I'm familiar with the cold calling back in 20. Dude. I had an internship in downtown San Francisco and the guy had a, um, a script. It was just like, ah. Oh. I, I hated doing that. I felt so disingenuine. Um, but it was part of what people did, right? I couldn't do online. I like an organic approach. I, and, and they're still out there, right? I've talked to people before. They feel like people are a little bit more standoffish because so many people are on their phone. So when someone cold approaches, they're like, what do you want? But I would say if you have some kind of common ground, that's big. You have some kind of common ground. That you're funny, Rob. If I hated the player, I'd hate myself. Game recognizes game. This is funny. Rob and uh, Mary got to meet up some point. But Rob, Rob, you're for, you're one of the few that's not a Carolina, and you're a Canadian. You don't have to go down to Carolina. You're a traveler. There's a shame we're allowed down there for you. No Starbucks. You can operate just fine. Maybe you are kindred spirits. Oh. Mary's in South Carolina, Myrtle Beach. The guy that I thought was interested sought me out. I'd actually met him at a function. I'd actually met him at a function. Everyone wanted his attention. He got away just to get some some water. He was near me, and I joked that every – I don't know if there's a Chiang Mai law in the Carolinas. I was just fucking with you. There is one in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Chiang Mai is a hotel. It's a big, it's a big hotel. It's a five-star, right? It's a – Rob Kyle's been doubling down. I see he's putting out a lot of videos, man. We got to join one of his live streams coming up here. He's he's busting out a lot of content. I'm happy for him. <clears throat> Thanks for introducing us. That was kind of you, bud. <clears throat> this has been hour twenty three minutes. The first hour went by. I didn't even check the. I didn't even check the uh, time. This has been good. This has been really good. I guess it's pretty late for you guys out there. I'm glad we got one in today, a good one. It's been a while. This Sunday, I just went, I'm going to give my vocals a rest. Uh, is it a fancy hotel? Yeah, I'd say it's fancy. I've been in many of his streams. Great stuff. Cool, man. Cool. Any closing questions, folks? This usually is another 10 or 15 minutes when I ask that. We got some new people to the show today.
No problem, Judy Jack. Well, thanks for your feedback for everyone else out there. I hope you have a good trip in Disneyland or Disney World. It's not the same, right? I've never been to Orlando, but it seems like a really nice place. Get some ginger tea for your sets. Um, why? <laughs> why get ginger tea? Where'd that come from? That's actually um, that's water with some uh, pineapple juice. I love pineapple juice, but it's really sweet sometimes. <clears throat> I'm actually at a point now where I just wake up and I go for a walk and I do some exercise and I don't need coffee. Oh, for my throat? Oh, okay. Well, you're right. Ginger tea does work. I just don't um, drink drink hot tea that much. Thanks, Coach, for your help and your advice. I would have broke no contact if it wasn't for you. Well, thanks, bud. I'll take that as a compliment because I think in your case you're doing the right thing right now. I really do. I really think you're doing the right thing. Oh, my God, that burns my throat. Pineapple just makes you taste good, though. <laughs> You're funny. Um, pineapple juice is one of my favorites, I think. And apple juice. Apple juice, it just dilute it. Too much sugar gets you a little wired. Any other questions, folks? Are we going to turn this one out at an hour and a half? The countdown. The detonation of the bomb this was a good one today good good live stream i appreciate you guys i i really do this is fun you're thinking like why you're having fun with our breakup issues i am actually it's like um being a teacher for years we get to the test time right and the students you know you get you got finals you got midterms and i said this is when i feel like it's really good being the teacher. But then I said, the, the flip side is that I got to grade all the papers. It takes a lot of time. Um, well, enjoy your sleep. Ginger is good for your nausea. I love pine. I love pineapple. Pineapple and mango. Are you going live in five hours again? Maybe. You want to do an NBA, uh, Rob, if I have you, if you can get five people on deck, I'll do an NBA show for an hour or two, but I'll have to do it on a different channel. I'm not going to um, convolute uh, this current channel. But do you have one thing about the NBA you want to ask me about? It's gone cold, really. Dragon fruit. That's good knowledge. I, do they have dragon fruit in the States? I don't remember seeing it. They have dragon fruit over here abundantly. Actually, you know what I really like? Real passion fruit. You might have had passion fruit juice, but the real passion fruit, like in yogurt, ooh, that's dynamite. Um, I've been thinking about something you said in another live stream. I'm focusing on new goals now, and hopefully that will help move forward. Good, Monica. Thanks for sharing that. If you want to share what your goals are just to share them with me, I'm not going to hold them to you and send them to me in an email. That's fine. You should share them with someone. Yep, this trip, a lot of times we're caught – we're caught in a zone where we're not looking forward to anything. And so we we just think there's nothing else to go forward to. And so that'll get us down. But if you, you know, like Judy Jack planning this trip right now, she's got something to look forward to. Trip this month should be fun. I'm a Disney nerd. First time in Orlando location. You're a Disney nerd, really? Well, I remember I had one of those um, Disneyland. I, I've been to Pirates. Pirates of the Caribbean was my favorite as a kid. I didn't. This might surprise some people. I hated rides. I still don't like. I don't like roller coasters. I don't like rides. So theme parks that are scare that have scary rides, I would just wait outside. That wasn't fun to me. I didn't trust the rides. I don't even know. I don't remember seeing passion fruit in the states. They probably have it in Vietnam, huh, Mary? Leachies are okay. They're okay. It's a big one. And I'm, you know what, folks? Because I suggested to you guys all the time. There was a time in my life I did some charity work some years back for, um, and I got paid partially, not very, very high, but I got paid. I worked at a charity and it was some of the, it was tough, but at times, but it was very, very fulfilling, very mind opening. Um, and so if you're in a place where you're really sad, 
I think depression, I've said it before, you're obsessed with yourself and your own outcomes. So why not go out of your way to help some other people out that have worse outcomes? I've actually had people go to a soup kitchen and we're like, that was weird. It was awkward, but it was really good. Oh, here we go. It is. So just do it. If I had to challenge someone to do something immediately to help them feel better, I would say do some kind of charity work. The problem is there's so many different things to offer. People don't know where to start. Don't do things where you donate money. Donate time. Get your hands dirty. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, it must be expensive there. The one thing I miss um, from the States that's a lot cheaper than here, you can get them here, but they're really expensive, is nectarines and avocados. You can get avocados, but they're not as good. Um, they grow them up north, but nect I used to love nectarines and peaches, like real peaches, but nectarines. How did we get talking about fruit? <laughs> Sorry, Dylan, we're on the end of this. Jeremy Lin, yeah. Well, Jeremy Lin made that big dramatic statement. People don't know what it's like that I can't be in the NBA anymore. It's like, dude, you got to be in the NBA for six, seven years. You had Showtime in New York. You made millions of dollars. No one's feeling sorry for you. Get a grip. Get a grip, seriously. Uh, I don't watch the. I don't watch baseball anymore. I used to be a huge San Francisco Giants fan. I still am. A, I just. I can't watch them now. In San Francisco, is mega expensive. Probably everything in San Francisco is expensive. Who doesn't like guacamole? I used to, when I used to live in uh, San Diego, they had the best cozy meals. They used to make fresh guacamole at the restaurant. Ooh. I love basketball. That's my favorite sport. It's I'm a Warriors fan, and that's not why. They, I've been a Warriors fan since birth, so, uh, but – I was a fan before they were good. I had season tickets when they sucked. Okay, one day can I bring some guacamole on the live stream where I'll share recipes? <laughs> this is this is the good part, folks. This is um, you know what's funny about this? No, I don't have my own channel about basketball. Rob just asked me questions, um, and I've thought about it before because I that's the one other thing that I. So it's like everyone has interest in different things, right? And I would say I have a really strong interest in the NBA and the Warriors and basketball. So he always asked me things about basketball and stuff. And if I did something else where I was just going to do something to talk about, it would probably be that. But it wouldn't be as useful and helpful to other people around the world as breakup coaching. Um, but, yeah, I love hoops. Love it. Do you remember Traces is your wars? to send them to the World Series. Oh, tr that's good knowledge. Travis Ishikawa. Yeah, that was big, dude. Yeah, hell yeah, I remember that. The funny thing about the Giants is I was a fan. I didn't have season tickets. I used to go to like 20 games a year, and then right when I move away, they win three World Series in like five years. Go figure. I was there for the year that Bonds hit all those home runs, though. And the game that he broke the record, I was there too. Really? Bonds is – I don't want to get into this right now. <laughs> I could have a sports channel. I could talk for hours about sports. Uh, Barry Bonds, though, yeah. I mean, he was a jerk in the media and stuff. I, I get that. But as far as, like, a pure, outstanding hitter, amazing to see in person. Amazing. Everyone When he was that good, everyone, everyone literally slamming. You'd go to a game, and it was like Babe fucking Ruth was up. I swear to God. He would, everyone would, it would be the fourth inning. Nothing's going on. No one's on a one, like a two, one game. And everyone would stand and be clapping. He'd had standing ovations in the fourth inning just to, just for batting. It was that exciting. And this idea that he maybe did steroids, everyone was doing them. I'm not validating it, but the pitchers were doing them that were pitching to him. And he still was the best guy in that period of time. So, and one of the things that's really interesting about Bonds. I saw him in a documentary or like a interview and he said the reason he was always an asshole to the media, his father, if you know, was a, a, a major leaguer and his father was an alcoholic. And he said one of the media members um, aired that 
in the papers and something like that. And so he said he always hated the media because of being a kid and the media treating his dad a certain way. So he had a reason. He wasn't just a born asshole. And most guys, let's face it, people that are the best at their sports or the best at their job or the best real estate agent, a lot of them are assholes. That's, that's how they are. Yep, McCovey Co. You guys, are, I haven't been to a Giants game in years, man. Years. Now it's really, really expensive. Yeah, if you're a baseball fan, I mean, his stats, I don't know who matches up. I, I, I mean, oh, that's right. You told me you're a Mets fan. I, I'm, I, we played the Mets quite a bit in the Mike Piazza Mets days. Um, I mean, I used to like, you're not, I think you're a little bit younger. I was a big Kevin Mitchell fan. And so like the 80s Giants, the late 80s, early 90s, I went to the Battle of the Bay when they had Conseco. I was a huge Giants fan. Kevin Mitchell, Will Clark, and Mitchell was a, a Met. Um, I go to Whole Foods here about once a month, and I always leave feeling I got ripped off. You know what? Uh, good food's more expensive. So there's, a re there's actually a store here that's high-end stuff, and I go up there. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought it was. I never thought Piazza was going to be as good as he was. Man, he was a great player. He's a great player. He's a really good player. Who else was on that team? So Bonds, Bond, his on base percentage is unhurt. It's the closest thing to Babe Ruth, dude. Of course, they're expensive everywhere. That's their. I mean, they have high end food, and it's, here's what you think about Whole Foods, right? It's not just the food. It's like, oh, it's so expensive. It's the ambiance. It's a beautiful place to buy food. It's gorgeous inside. It smells nice. They have nice samples. It's everything. It ain't Costco. Dan Gladden? Wow, that's knowledge, Rob. That's an old one, dude. He actually was a twin also. If you get into baseball stuff with me from the 80s and early 90s, I'm like Rain Man. It's like Dan Gladden, definitely, de 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 definitely Dan Gladden. I can I can go Rain Man on that just because I used to collect baseball cards. My memory's so good. Oh, Robin Ricky Henderson was on that team. Al Leiter, he was a giant. The Grunner. Robin Ventura, I, I always liked his swing. Johnny Franco was still on the team. He's an old one from the Reds. Ricky Henderson was my favorite player as a kid in the late 80s. So that was um I actually had Ricky Henderson's autograph and stuff. That was a big deal. I used to love, love Ricky Henderson. Moises Alou actually went to my junior college. Not that that is a big deal. <laughs> um, spend a little money on the food, and you don't have to spend so much on the doctor. I, 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 I'm the same way. I, I buy less food that's high quality. That way I don't have a bunch of crap in my fridge. And I go visit my parents, and they shop at Costco. And I leave, and it's just like you can't help but eat a drumstick or because they just shop. They buy all this junk food in bulk. Uh, I agree with what uh, Fun Chua said, actually. Uh, Ricky Enters, I'll say Blue Jay, a huge part of the 93 World Series, ninth inning. He was on the – no, you're talking about when he was an A. Yeah. No, I agree with you about the food thing. He's just a great – Ricky Henderson is a great player. He played like 25 years or something too. It's interesting about him. He threw left and batted right. That's really rare. Henderson drew the ninth inning walk a few batters later, the home run into the series. Henderson on 93 was on the Blue Jays or he was on the A's? It's an American thing, Mary, to buy in bulk. So you open up the fridge and it's just – thousands of options and you wonder why a lot of people are obese you just like i buy food for the next three or four days i have right now i open my fridge i have a bunch of juice i have like two or three juices i have greek yogurt smoked salmon um i don't have a lot of other food and actually i'll just i'll eat out a little bit more oreos yeah you're right i gotta go soon myself you're right uh. 
Oh, really? I didn't know that, Rob. That's good knowledge. I didn't know he had, I didn't know he had one with the Blue Jays also. Good knowledge. Yeah, my late 80s knowledge is probably the best. I used to listen to rate games on the radio. Kevin Mitchell, like I said, was my favorite player when I was he had like four Kevin Mitchell, look this up if you guys are a baseball fan and tell me this is the most underrated play in the history of baseball. The barehanded catch by Kevin Mitchell. Go look this up, Mr. Slamming, Rob I.S. This guy caught an on the run, on the fucking run, on the run, like that, in the air. Crazy. Crazy. Mm, pineapple juice. Good night. Good night. See you later. It's time to close it out. The talk did change pretty quick. This happens sometimes in these these um, live streams. It's just the way it rolls. I'll check it out after your live stream. Kevin Mitchell, barehanded catch. Tell me what you think. I'll drop the mic on that. Mary, are you into tequila? <laughs> All right, guys and gals, it's been good. It's been real, real good. Good talking to you. Have a good day. It's Curtains.